Hi, I'm Stephen M. Miller. I write books about the Bible. I think most folks know that the Romans crucified people. They crucified people they thought threatened the Roman way of life, and they did it to send a message. Don't mess with Rome. Crucifixion wasn't just a slow and painful way to die. It was shameful, reserved for the worst offenders. The Bible talks a bit about what it was like to go through a crucifixion. Soldiers took Jesus into their headquarters. They stripped him, spit on him, grabbed a stick and struck him. Pilate had Jesus flogged with a lead-tipped whip. The soldiers wove a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they put a purple robe on him. Hail, King of the Jews, they mocked as they slapped him across the face. Carrying the cross by himself, he went to the place called Place of the Skull, Golgotha. There, they nailed him to the cross. Bible writers weren't the only ones talking about crucifixion. So did the Romans, in gritty detail. I don't think many people know what the Romans had to say about crucifixions they saw with their own eyes in the days when Jesus was alive. He was whipped until his bones showed. Each criminal who goes to execution must carry his own cross on his back. Sixteen men were paraded out, chained together by the foot and neck, each carrying his own cross. The executioners added this grim public spectacle to the punishment as an extra deterrent to anyone thinking about committing the same crime. Some hang their victims upside down, some impale them through the private parts, others stretch out their hands onto forked poles. Is there such a thing as a person who would actually prefer wasting away in pain on a cross, dying limb by limb, one drop of blood at a time, rather than dying quickly? Would any human being willingly choose to be fastened to that cursed tree, especially after the beating that left him deathly weak, deformed, swelling with vicious welts on shoulders and chest, and struggling to draw every last agonizing breath? Anyone facing such a death would plead to die rather than mount the cross. Reliable witnesses saw the man being dragged to the cross while crying out that he was a Roman citizen. And you, Varys, confirmed that he did cry out that he was a Roman citizen, yet you sent him to a most cruel and shameful death anyhow. Every day, Roman soldiers caught 500 Jews or more. The soldiers, driven by their hatred of the Jews, nailed them to crosses. They nailed them in many different positions to entertain themselves and to horrify the Jews watching this spectacle from inside the walled city of Jerusalem. In time, the soldiers ran out of wood for crosses and room for crosses even if they had found more wood. Romans didn't just write about crucifixion. They reported the crucifixion of Jesus. Jesus actually shows up in Roman history books and letters written during his own century. There was a wise man called Jesus, a good person, who could work wonders. He attracted many followers, Jews and non-Jews. Pilate, at the request of our leaders, sentenced him to death by crucifixion. Nero blamed the fire that destroyed much of Rome on a group of people he found so disgusting that he ordered them tortured in horrifying ways. They were Christians. They got their name from Christus, a man who suffered the ultimate penalty at the hands of a procurator, Pontius Pilate, when Tiberius was emperor of Rome. The fact that Jesus lived and was crucified isn't just a story in the Bible, Christian scholars say. It's written into Roman history. For more about Jesus and Roman crucifixion, you can check out some of my books, such as A Quick Guided Tour Through the Bible, The Complete Guide to the Bible, or Understanding Jesus. If you like this background info, would you give it a thumbs up? My mother counts those. If you subscribe to this channel and to my blog articles, I'll keep you posted on Bible background info like this. Thanks for watching. Peace to you.